thanks for joining us at this event. Um, my name is Chloe. I um, was an intern at the Pride Center over the summer, a therapist intern. Um, and, sorry, one second. And the, Michelle came to me, she's one of the other therapists, and we kind of talked about how some of her clients wanted an event like this, because um, a lot of them didn't know like the legal process of getting their legal name changed and their gender marker. So we thought that we would reach out to the LGBT and allied lawyers of Utah, and they connected us with two really great people who we'll be hearing from today. We'll start today with Maya Anderson, and then we'll have Kyla O'Brien speak. And the presentation will be about an hour long, and then we'll have like a 15 minute Q&A at the end, if you wanna stay on for that. Um, and just to remind everyone, this will be recorded. Um, so if you don't feel comfortable with that, let us know. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to put your questions in the chat box and we'll get to it most likely during the Q&A portion, just so that we can get through the presentations. So I would first like to introduce Maya Anderson. She's a special education advocate from the Disability Law Center. Um, go ahead, Maya. Alrighty, thank you everybody for coming today. Um, as Chloe said, my name is Maya Anderson. Um, I am a special education advocate with the Disability Law Center. Um, which is part of the National Disability Rights Network. Um, it's basically an organization at the federal level which administers state level programs um, for protection and advocacy of people with disabilities. Um, so we're not like technically an arm of the government, but kind of administered on that level. So it's kind of interesting. Um, I absolutely love my job. My job is special education, um, teaching, not teaching, but um, working with parents of students with disabilities in public schools um, to help them get services under the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act and Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act. Um, and so I am come here today for a slightly different reason, of course. Um, you are all here today to learn how to go through the process of changing your name and gender in the state of Utah. Um, so we will get right to that. I have a PowerPoint that I'm going to put up. I, I can figure this out. Um, all right, let's see. Can everybody see that? Can I get a, a thumbs up? Cool, all right. Okie dokie. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm trying to figure out how to orient my thing. Can everybody hear me okay? Okay, sweet. <clears throat> so, welcome to Changing Your Legal Name and Gender in Utah. Um, as I already said, I'm Maya Anderson, so we don't need to do that again. Um, so, Bonvenon al Chiwi, that means welcome in Esperanto, um, which is a constructed language that I'm very fond of. Um, so, basically, um, what I'm going to be talking about today is, um, you know, just kind of the process of how to go through the paperwork and submitting all of it, knowing what to do, what order to file things in, who to talk to, what to do if you have questions, and just kind of an idea of the whole process from the beginning to the end, um, the whole thing. So I'm somebody who has actually done this before myself. Um, I'm a transgender woman <clears throat> and I have actually done this before I did my own um, way back a long time ago, actually it wasn't that long, it was actually just in 2018, um, but I did do that and um, it's actually quite painless, I would say at least um, for the most part. And um, I, um, I also have worked a lot with the Rainbow Law Clinic, if any of you are familiar with that, the Utah Pride Center does a free legal clinic for trans, well, for anybody, any LGBT related issues, um, but the majority of what we tend to see is trans people getting help with name and gender change stuff. Um, it's complicated and people have lots of questions about that. So um, essentially um, that is, that's, that's what we're doing. That's, that's our jam. Oh yeah, and also we'll be having questions and answers at the very end, we'll be 15 minutes. If you wish to do a question 
you can type it in the chat, I think is probably the best way of doing that. And we'll just kind of answer them, hopefully sort of rapid fire at the end in whatever order they come in. So start putting those down in there, friends. Um, we'll get that going. Um, so yeah, um, just real quick a little bit about myself. I'm not gonna take too much time. I just have some random things over here representing me, I guess you could say. I have the Esperanto flag, I already mentioned that. Um, I play the xylophone and the marimba and band, and so I'm very fond of keyboard and mallet percussion instruments. Um, I'm a member of the Episcopal Church, so I have that. Um, and I participate in that. Um, I'm a giant fan of the Dark Souls video game series, so I have the bonfire here for that. And here's my little cartoon character. I do a webcomic um, just in my spare time, just for fun. That is kind of a satirical view of Utah and Utah culture. Um, so anyway, that's me. Oh yeah, and we have the DLC here. We have our fun little wheelchair logo. I think that's very, very good. Good design, in my opinion. I didn't do it. Um, I wish I did. It's very good. Um, starting to sound like Donald Trump. I don't know why I'm doing this. Um, <laughs> it's a very good logo. It's the best logo, I promise. Um, okay, let's go. Oh yes, of course. <clears throat> here is the moment you've all been waiting for. This is this link right here. I don't know why it's purple. I think probably because I clicked it already. Um, blending a little bit with the purple background that I picked, not very convenient. Um, but this is the page where they have all of the forums. So you all are very, very lucky. When I filled this out back in my day, when I was back when I was a wee, you know, when I was a little tran, you know, I had to fill out like there was like seven or eight, there was way more of these forums than there are now. So they've actually simplified this significantly just in the past couple of years. Um, so that is very good for all of you. Um, anyway, if you go here, it will say there's four forums. Um, oops, I just clicked on it. That's not what I wanted to do. Hold on. Nope. It's not what I wanted. <laughs> okay, cool. If you click on it, like I just did, which I was not supposed to do, then it would take you to a page where it would have these four forms. Um, so these are the four forms that you need to do to get started. And this, keep in mind, and I'll go over this in more detail in a bit, this is the state level. So it's kind of complicated because when we're talking about name changes, we are talking about a state level procedure, but usually we have two state, two state laws involved, at least assuming you were born in a different state than you live. So if you were living in Utah, things are actually significantly simpler for you. Um, in most every way, which you might not expect, um, Utah is actually fairly friendly um, for trans people getting their name and gender changed, contrary to what you might believe otherwise. Um, <clears throat> but rather say it's not so much. Um, however, we are lucky to live in Utah. I, I know you probably don't think of saying that ever, but welcome to the Beehive State, folks. Um, so the first form that you need to file, it doesn't, these other ones, it doesn't really matter the order except for this first one you need to do first. So the um, sex offender registry check is, well, it's exactly what it sounds. So you basically have to fill out a certification that says, um, well, it's, it's technically, you just fill out your name and some other stuff. And I have copies of all the forms on, this, on these slides that I'll show you so you know what they look like. Um, and so you basically have to do a background check um, before you do any of this stuff to make sure that you are not on the sex offender registry or the um, the child abuse registry. There's actually two in Utah. There's two different registries that they have. It's not just the sex offender registry. There's the sex offender registry and there is the, uh, or the sex and kidnap, I think is what it's called, and the child abuse registry. So. They're actually separate. If you are on the child abuse registry, you cannot change your name and gender in Utah, period, ever. Um, if you are on, um, if you are, you know, if you're a sex and kidnap offender, well, first of all, don't be. Don't be a sex offender. Um, second of all, <laughs> if you are on that list, however, you are not technically banned from changing your name. However, it is more difficult. Um, so more on that in a sec. Um, and then, um, so these other three, cover sheet for probate actions. Probate is basically kind of a catch-all term that refers to name changes, um, family law stuff. It's a lot of just kind of random ministerial things. Um, so this, it used to have like, there used to just be one cover sheet that had like 8,000 different things on it. Now, as you'll see here, this is actually a lot easier to find 
Um, a petition for name change. This is the most spicy one. This is where all the fun stuff happens. Um, the most involved. And then the order is what I like to call the holy grail. The order on petition is what you get at the very end. You actually have to fill out part of it, but the judge does most of it. That thing is what you get at the very end, and that is your holy grail. That is your skeleton key, golden ticket, to get all of your delicious, tasty documents um, that you need to have more fun with your life than you are right now, um, at least presumably. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, so, and then also, um, this is not, they didn't, they took out the guidance that used to be there on their website, but in the past it was recommended that you have a doctor's letter, so if you're trans, most of us are on hormone replacement therapy, or, you know, have had some sort of surgery or whatnot, if you have a doctor around here, or whomever you see and who has been seeing you, or a therapist, gender therapist, whomever, really, it, you know, it can be a therapist, I put a letter from my doctor that prescribed my hormones, um, and um, that is recommended. I don't think it's necessary, but I strongly recommend that you do it. You can ask a doctor for it. Some doctors will make you pay money for it, which is stupid, but some will just write it um, for you. I think the University of Utah, they do HRT now. That's actually where I'm at right now um, for hormones. I'm pretty sure they do letters like this for free. Um, don't quote me on that though, because um, I had a different doctor earlier. Um, uh, yeah, okay, cool. Next. Okie dokie. So, now we get into the meat and taters. It's always meat and taters. I'm from Idaho, so it has to be meat and taters. Um, okay, so we have, we're going to go through just this whole process with a kind of pretend fake trans man um, who is named Jane Doe legally and is changing his, prefer his name to his preferred name, John Doe. Very creative, I know. Um, <clears throat> spicy name choices. Um, so here we have at the top, I don't, I'm not sure if you can see my mouse. I don't know how this works. Um, here at the top, um, I almost pointed at the screen. That would have been even stupider. Um, <laughs> just watch me fumble about here. Um, so here at the top, so you'll note this, they actually have made this, like I said, a lot easier and simpler and more straightforward. Um, it says name currently used. So this is your legal name. So for instance, you know, if I am trans man John Doe, I would put Jane Doe, as that is my legal name. Um, I thought about putting like John Transman or something like that, because I thought that would be funny, but I, never mind. Anyway, I'm not funny. <laughs> Ignore me. Um, <laughs> okay, and then put your address. You all know your address, or at least you should, I hope. Um, I made up a fake address in Utah. Lindbergh is not a real town. It is actually the town in my webcomic um, <laughs> that I mentioned earlier. Um, your phone number, you want to put that down, and then an email address. Specifically, you don't want to put your burner email address. You do not want to put your, you know, TurboGamer420 at, you know, dot, 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 you know, abc.net. You want to put your email that you actually check, you know, whatever email that you're actually getting emails to that you're going to know, because, like, they're either going to email you or they're going to call you. And if you don't respond to that in time, you can get in trouble, not in trouble, but like you might have to start over or like do stuff over, or you might, you know, it's that just don't do it. Um, so, um, long story short, just fill that out this way. So this is the sex offender, kidnap offender, child abuse offender thing. You'll note that where it says judge and case number, you do not know that yet. So you're not going to put anything. Um, that is for the judge. They will actually, when you fill out all these forms, they will sign a judge and the clerk will write in the case number and the judge. Um, so you do not know who the judge is. You might not even end up in the same courthouse. Fun fact, when I went to do my name change, I filed in the third district court in Matheson Courthouse on 400 South, just about 10 minutes away from my apartment. And where they sent me was West Jordan. West Jordan Courthouse, 30 minutes away from my house. Delightful. Um, anyway, so be wary of surprises. Yeah, anyway, I think it's a curse for me personally. I always like I'd interview for a job when I was a kid. I worked at Jimmy John's. I, I interviewed for a Jimmy John's that was five minutes away and I got hired 60 minutes away. It's just my luck, I'm telling you. It wasn't 60, it was more like 30. Anyway, don't get me off track. Um, here we have our petitioner's full name, legal name again, Jane Marie Doe. Um, you know, whatever your legal name is currently as it stands now. Um, your date of birth, um, 
Again, you should probably know that and your driver's license number in wherever state that you are from. Um, there's actually a second page to the, or a, there's three pages to this. I didn't include the second page because it's just, you'll have to include that, but you mail it in. It's for the sex offender registry people to fill out. Um, and it says, next page to be filled out by sex offender registry people. These instructions on the right here are just instructions. They do not need to be sent in. Um, the address here in Draper, Utah, you want to send your stuff there. Um, they will check you and send it back. You must contain a self-addressed envelope with a stamp. If you do not send that in, they will not send it back. I cannot emphasize this enough. You must have a self-addressed envelope. Um, if you don't know what that is, it's literally an envelope inside of the other envelope that also has a stamp and your address in the spot where it's like as if you were mailing a letter to yourself. Um, so don't write in the like send the return address, just write in your address as if you were sending it to yourself. Put a stamp on it, stick it in the other envelope, and then mail that as you normally would. <clears throat> so envelopes inside of envelopes, envelope section, um, and all that jazz. So that is that. So again, don't be a sex offender. Um, just don't, and you'll be fine. Um, this is the cover sheet for probate actions. Um, this is really straightforward. It's pretty much your name, your address, your, you know, all that jazz. Um, you'll probably not have an attorney. Um, if you are on the um, kidnap and sex offender, but not the child abuse registry, and therefore you are technically able to register, um, the requirement is you basically have to inform the court of why you should be allowed to register anyway and like kind of prove why like your interest in changing your name like outweighs the public's interest in not letting you do that because you are a sex offender, <laughs> you know? So um, it's just messy. So if you are, were in that situation, maybe you would want to get an attorney, but otherwise, I mean, or, you know, as Kyler will talk about later, um, some places in Utah are much less friendly than Salt Lake is, um, as you might imagine. So in terms of like this whole process, it can be very complicated. So we'll get into that in a sec, but for the most part, you do not need an attorney. I didn't have an attorney. I mean, I, at this point, I am like two seconds away from actually being an attorney. So I guess it doesn't really matter, but um, wish me luck. Uh, <laughs> and um, I, whoa, what the heck? Oh, I, I've drawn on my, oh. Is everybody seeing this like scribbly on my screen? Hmm. Yeah, it, it looks like someone annotated your Zoom. Who is doing this? I think I did it accidentally. I got, like, confused between checking the chat and then <laughs> couldn't get back to this part of the discussion. Sorry. Okay, you're fine. Can you erase it? Is that, is that a thing that you could do? I don't know how to do that. I did. Oh, eraser. I found an eraser. Okay. Yay. Okay, there beautiful. <laughs> I was very disturbed because I thought that I did that, and that's definitely something that I would do, accidentally start scribbling on my PowerPoint. Can't get out of this edit. Okay, I'm out. <laughs> okay, thank you, mysterious stranger. I can't see who you are, but you are, you are well, you, you will, you will, uh, your soul will die in Valhalla. Um, <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Technical difficulties aside, schedule of fees. Oh, I have some bad news for all y'all. They actually made, they actually made it more expensive to do this whole thing. It was $360 when I did it back in 2018. It's 375 now. I know, super lame. So you got to cough up 375 cruzados if you want to change your name in Utah. Um, <laughs> so get on that, folks. Um, there, are, there is a way you can file an optional form for um, if you can't pay. There is a way to file like a, um, indi not indigent, but like, I am broke, please help <laughs> sort of form. I didn't include that here because I didn't do that. And uh, it's pretty straightforward. If you know how to do this and you need to do that, you can ask them for that and you'll be able to fill it out. Um, I'm not sure where they financial have Financial assistance form? Yes, the financial assistance form. <clears throat> um, and yes, name change, check your box. That's basically that. Uh, attorney, none, so that's easy. Okay. Here's the fun part. Um, this is the petition. Um, so this is where things get real screwy. So in the state of Utah, there are no laws about trans people at all. <laughs> Twilight Zone theme starts playing in background. You have ceased to exist. Um, no, uh, 
what that means is, um, so I mentioned earlier, Utah is actually one of the friendlier states. The reason for that is they don't pay attention. There has been no, like there, none of the lawmakers even like had it in their brain that people were gonna change their name and they were gonna change their gender, basically. That's like not a thing that was in their like 1950s brain when they were making these laws. So there's nothing that says you can, there's nothing that says you can't. So technically you can, um, at least according to the common law in Utah. Um, but it's a secret, you know, not really, but um, they, it's, it's just weird. So you'll notice that I've literally written in here with my like marker or my pen, you know, as if you would, I literally have this here, petition for name change, this in bold here, um, in the little like T thing where below where it says in the district court of Utah third judicial district, Salt Lake County, petition for name change in bold. I have written in gen or and gender, name and gender. So you'll notice all these forms only say name change. There is no gender change form at all, um, ever. <laughs> I say that a lot. Um, you literally have to write in and gender everywhere it says name. I didn't write it in over there where it says in the matter of the name change of, I mean, you probably could do that too. I guess it doesn't really matter. You basically, everywhere relevant, you have to specify you are changing your name and your gender. So on this form especially, you want to write in name and gender change. So you'll see we have our name here, Jane Marie Doe is our birth name, dead name. Um, we want our name to be John Michael Doe. Um, number five here, um, if you look at that, it says I want to change my name because and it gives you a couple of lines. Here, I just recommend that you write in something to this effect. I am a transgender man slash woman slash whatever. Um, I'm a non-binary person, I am whatever, you know. Um, I am changing my legal name to reflect what I use in my daily life and my legal gender to properly reflect my self-image or my gender identity or my, however you choose to describe it. We all have different ways of referring to our complicated gender mess. Um, so uh, something to that effect, you basically just want to convey that the reason that you are doing this is because you are trans. That's pretty much it, you know, like that you're not, you're not doing this to get away from the loans or from the feds or from, you know, the mafia. <laughs> you are doing this to get away from your dysphoria, basically. That's the reason, um, you know, not anything else. So that's what you should write. Um, <clears throat> here we have, um, these are literally, so I say literally like 30 times in the past 10 seconds, in 20 minutes, like, please stop me. Um, this part down here is basically like an affidavit almost. So you're actually swearing that you, that all of these things are true. I do not know any reason why I should not be allowed to change my name. I am not involved in any court actions or proceedings besides this. I am not in predation. I am not on the child abuse offender registry. I am not on the sex kidnap offender registry. All of these things. I'm not changing my name for any, snark, you know, shenanigan reasons. Um, you do all of those things and um, so you gotta make sure that all those things are true. If, one of, if those things are not true, you could get in serious trouble. So you are actually promising, you know, pinky swear that everything on that, <laughs> on that their list is actually true and accurate. In the corner I have the third page, just it's only like half a page, but I just kind of cut it out, put it there. Um, you can sign your name with your preferred name if you want. That's what I did. Doesn't really matter, um, but you can if that floats your boat. Um, so I put John Doe there um, for our trans man. And this is the Holy Grail that I mentioned. This is the order um, filled out or not filled out by the judge. Um, so it's filled out just like it was otherwise. Put the name, you know, your, your info, court info, legal name, um, leave the case number and judge blank um, and all of this stuff. Uh, I, I shouldn't have put it's number one, that should be blank. I didn't, I accidentally put that in. So you should leave with number one blank. Um, <clears throat> the rest of it, you can fill out number two and just put your birthday in because we already know that. Put your legal name in there. Um, on number seven, this is kind of weird. I was recommended by people at Rainbow Law Clinic by one of the attorneys there that you can write in basically a request that um, the vital statistics office shall not issue a new birth certificate with an amendment to your previous gender. <coughs> Basically, what that means is, um, <coughs> oh, geez, sorry, hold on. 
what that means is um, some states like to issue these amended birth certificates where if you're, you know, if I'm John Doe, for instance, I am changing my name from Jane to John, they might put my legal, my birth certificate says F, for instance, I want it to be M. Uh, they might like do a thing where they'll like put an F with a crossed out through it and then put an M next to it. So it's like obvious that you're trans. This is not super cool um, for obvious reasons. Um, I, uh, you know, for not to get too off track, but one of the main, one of the reasons why this whole process is really important is I actually, one time when I was going through TSA um, flying out, I was actually going to a, a consultation for, for bottom surgery, funnily enough. And um, it was before I had changed my name legally. And um, as I was going through the line, um, I had my old driver's license and I've never actually like gotten stopped or anything like that before, even though I've been transitioned for a while. The man stopped me and he actually read out my legal name to everyone there and announced that I was male, um, biologically male, and um, pretty much like ridiculed me in front of like 20 people behind me in line. Um, and I just kind of like went really red in the face and gathered all my stuff and just like hauled ass on out of there. But, you know, it was really upsetting. And, you know, like things like that, you know, having a birth certificate, having a driver's license, having documents that reflect who you are is actually really important, you know, in your daily life. It can prevent really weird, awkward, terrible things like that from happening to you. So. In case you were wondering whether or not, you know, this whole annoying process is all worth it. Um, so uh, I, think I, I think I forgot something. Um, yeah, don't, don't mess with any of the rest of the stuff. Um, in the bottom corner here, it says you want to write and petitioner's gender is changed to whatever. Um, at the top there, just like, with, just like with the other thing and write and gender in there. Write your name, spell it right, do not, do not misspell your name. You will end up with the wrong spelled name on your birth certificate. That is not good. Um, it would be really fun if my name ended up as Mayo Violet Anderson on my birth certificate. Um, that did not happen, but I have to be very careful. Um, not that that isn't a fun name. My brother actually calls me Mayo, that's my nickname. Uh, <laughs> but um, anyway. Okay, so we're almost done here um, with my part. The big bad hearing. Um, and I'm almost out of time as well. Oh, sorry, I just knocked out of my little thing. Hold on. Okay, probate clerk. So when you go into the courthouse, you're gonna to wanna to find the probate clerk. <clears throat> the probate clerk is the person who does probate. <laughs> Duh. Um, they, in the Matheson courthouse, um, if you go there in downtown Salt Lake, as I imagine a lot of you probably are going to be going to, then you'll go straight in the door turn right, I think, and it's on the first floor down at the end of the hallway. There may or may not be a line. Um, you're gonna have um, all, of, so you're gonna have to get your sex offender registry form back first before you do any of that. Once you have that back, you can file, fill out all the other stuff, put that all together, get your doctor's letter if you're doing that. 375 buckaroonies, sorry. Um, or alternatively, your you know, petition for financial like relief. Uh, um, oh, there's also like, if you have like a divorce, if you're on child support or alimony, I forgot to mention this, this is important. You also have to file a, certi a certificate of service because if there are parties that are interested in your name change, which usually is just like your ex-wife and your kids <laughs> um, or ex your ex-spouse, um, then uh, you have to notify them that you've changed your name. So you have to file a certificate of service with them uh, or you have to serve, you have to notify them and then file a certificate of service with the court. That is included in the document, um, the order on petition. Um, so if you download the PDF from Utah Court's website, it will have that there, but you don't need to fill it out if you are not, you know, paying child support or something like that. Um, so um, fee, $375. You want to keep hyper vigilant on your phone and email because once you file, they will assign you a judge. You will get a call back probably in the next little bit telling you you've been assigned a judge and they will tell you, we're gonna call you back in a couple of weeks to assign you a court date. Um, for me, mine was at 8.45 in the morning at West Jordan. Uh, so it's usually bright in Norway, I feel like, um, although they're pretty flexible. You can find times to come in if you have work. They can do early, you know, they can do later. I think they might even be able to do on Saturdays and things like that, um, not for sure. 
So just kind of let them know about that if you have any specific scheduling problems. And like I said, answer all those weird phone numbers that you don't get. I know we all get a lot of robocalls, but like just answer all of them. You never know which one, which one of those weird 801 numbers is actually going to be the court. <laughs> don't want to miss that. Um, dress for success, you are going to court. Um, I actually dressed up today um, with a, you know, reasonable example of like what I might wear. Um, it's kind of strange, but it's just a dress. Doesn't really matter um, if you're a girl, you can put on some sort of nice looking dress. It doesn't have to be businessy. Just, you know, I put channel your inner Mormon kid, you know, dress like you would go if you were going to your old ward. Um, for those of us who used to be LDS or still are. Um, <clears throat> then um you know just 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 look nice basically i also say this is kind of weird but um you want to kind of like you want to kind of look really stereotypical <laughs> for lack of a better word this is you know it's kind of awkward but like a lot we're in utah you know as much as i hate to say it we are in utah they are kind of like the judges here do tend to have kind of a weird view of trans people and so a lot of them are, are chill here but you never really know what you're going to get so the whole thing is you basically, when you show up, you actually have to go in and basically prove to the judge why you should be allowed to do what you're doing. And um, they'll ask you, um, you know, for instance, when I went in, they'll ask you, you know, why are you changing your name? And you'll say something like, you know, I am trans, I identify as female, I am, you know, I, I've transitioned, blah, 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 blah. I'm trying to, I'm trying to change my name so that I can have, so I can get away with not having people call me out in TSA, <laughs> you know. Um, so tell them, you know, basically exactly what it is. I want to change my, my documents so I can have documents that reflect my cells, you know. And they'll ask you, are you trying to avoid creditors? Are you trying to avoid loans? And you'll say no, because you're not, because you're all angels. And um, none of you are committing tax fraud or defaulting on loans or anything like that, or the IRS is after, you're all wonderful, beautiful angels. I trust you. Um, and so uh, you're gonna do that. That's pretty much it. Um, they probably won't ask, they might ask you how long you've been transitioning. You know, hopefully they won't ask anything like really weird or invasive. For me, they didn't. It was kind of just like, you know, how long have you been doing this whole thing? Just to kind of, they want to make sure that you know what you're doing so that like it's obvious that you're serious about it you know i actually am trans i'm here changing my name for this i'm not just saying that i'm trans so that i can get away with tax fraud or whatever you know you are actually trans you're going in there to change your name um and gender so you want to look yeah like i said um you know if you're if you're a trans woman probably want to wear a dress if you're a trans man you probably want to wear a shirt and tie um you know that's pretty much what it is. If you're non-binary, this is kind of more complicated. I would probably try to dress as androgynously as possible. I know there isn't really like business casual non-binary. It seems kind of strange to even say, but um, I don't know, just figure it out. Dress androgynously, just look like your gender, basically. You know, even if you're gender non-conforming in your daily life, like I tend to be, if you saw me in my daily life, I do not look like this. <laughs> I'm in a tank top and jeans almost all the time. But um, you just got to do it, you know? It's just one of those things. You'll get it over with, you'll get your name changed, and then you can go back to doing what you're doing. Um, anyway, so, and yes, remember to address the judge as your honor. That's, you know that if you've watched any of those really lame, like, legal TV shows <laughs> or anything like that. Don't be a jerk to the judge. Just don't, even if they are terrible, just don't do it. They are more powerful than you. They have a big shiny hammer and you don't. Never argue with somebody who has a hammer when you do not have a hammer. Life advice. Um, yeah. And uh, finally, um, the naughty list. Um, so the very end, I know I'm going a little bit over right now, but just real quick. Um, these states here in red, if you are born in one of these two states, I have some pretty bad news for you, and I'm not, like, this isn't a funny haha -ha joke time. I know I'm really funny, you know, like, silly all the time, but, like, I'm, like, I'm serious. Like, you literally cannot change your name and gender if you live in, if you were born in Ohio or Tennessee, period. Um, as of right now, as of 2020, if your birth certificate says Ohio or Tennessee, you cannot change your gender at all. 
Um, so that is, it sucks. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how else to say it, you know? It, it blows. It's just really lame. And um, uh, it used to be that Idaho and Kansas were also on the naughty list. I have the little silhouettes in the corner for honorable mentions. Idaho recently had a federal court rule that the ban was unconstitutional and basically struck it down. In response, the governor this year put it, like, pushed through legislation to ban changing your name and sex on your birth certificate, basically defying the federal court. In response, the federal court went in back and struck that down. So now we're back to square one. You can change your name and sex in Idaho. Congratulations. Um, <laughs> I was actually born in Connecticut. I'm from Idaho, but um, I didn't have any trouble with that. But Idaho and Kansas, Kansas changed it as of like last year, I think, as well. So Kansas, you're good. Um, Ohio and Tennessee, bad news there. Um, but basically, the last thing that I was going to say before I wrap up here is um, uh, once you have your order, so you filled out those four forms. You filed them all with the probate clerk. You come in for your hearing. You do your hearing. You're done with your hearing. You go down, they, they give you your court order. They, you go downstairs, you ask the clerk for certified copies. So find out whoever can give you certified copies and ask for three or four certified copies. You'll have to pay some money, like five bucks for each one. The copies must be certified if you want to have them accepted by vital statistics. They must be. So you can't just hand them any old, like you can't photocopy it, you can't scan it. It has to be certified. That means they have a stamp and it's signed by the clerk and it's basically like notarized kind of. Um, you have to have a certified copy. It will not be accepted by vital statistics if you do not have a certified copy. So remember that. Don't photocopy it. Don't take the staple out even. That's a thing that you can do that will get you busted. That will make your copy not certified. Technically in some places we'll be really anal about that. <laughs> Oh boy. Anyway, once you have that order though, that is your holy grail. You take that to the happiest place on earth, the DMV, and um, you can stand in line for three miserable hours. You can present that to them. Once you have that order, that's basically all that you need to get a new driver's license, wherever you're at. However, um, or sorry, no, I lied. I, I got backwards. Sorry. Birth certificate first. You must go to your state of birth. Send in the order to the state of birth. That will give you your birth certificate. It changes depending on the state, so you'll want to look up your, your state of birth. If you're born in Utah, it's really easy. You can drive to Vital Statistics here in Salt Lake and do it all there. Super easy. If you're born somewhere else, you could probably have to mail it. So look up on the internet what your state does. It's completely different by state. Um, but the order, the Utah order, has to go to your state of birth. I sent my Utah order to Connecticut, for instance, and they took the Utah order and sent me a Connecticut birth certificate. I took that Connecticut birth certificate to the Utah DMV and got a Utah driver's license. Um, so your birth certificate doesn't change. Everything else does <clears throat> in terms of state. And that's basically it. Um, so with that, bon chance on everyone. Um, I really hope that you learned something here and that you um, have good luck in your journey, transitioning and changing your name and all that good stuff. So yeah, I'd like to go ahead and turn the rest of the time over to Kyler for his part of this presentation to talk about the very, very interesting topic of X gender markers and non-binary gender changes.